Welcome back, brothers and sisters. I am Braden. This is Langley Outdoors Academy, and thank you for stopping by. All right, guys, what we're going to talk about on the bullet points this morning is specifically a reaction and an observation to what gun controllers are doing across the board. Whether you're talking about a gun control personality, a gun control billionaire, a gun control founding and leading member of Mom's Man Action, or the media itself, the reaction and the why they would have the reaction is incredibly important because keep in mind, the line that they always feed us on the gun control side of the narrative is, if we could save one life, it's worth it. Never mind all the other policies that do complete opposite of that. We're only going to focus on this right now. But again, look at the why. Because if it was truly about saving lives, they would be applauding the situation, but they're not. They're going back to their platitudes, their tired old lines, and their practice talking points that they're going to continually go back to because this is about ideology. This is not about what their stated end goal of saving lives is. That's what we're going to talk about. Everything is linked in the description box below per usual. Let me know what you guys think and send this one out because I personally think this is telling. But you guys can tell me and give me the feedback in the comments. Let's go. Here comes the queen of gun control founder, Mom's Man Action, Shannon Watts herself. Two things can be true. This is as of yesterday on her Twitter account. One, it's good more people didn't die in the Indiana mall mass shooting. That pretty much could have been in the statement, but there's a two. Relying on untrained and unvetted armed civilians to take out the gunmen we've given easy access to arsenals and ammunition is an absurd and ineffective public strategy, safety strategy, says the woman talking about something that just was proven incredibly effective, faster than any police response, faster than anything else that could have been on record. And the only thing that has actually successfully stopped a mass shooting. It's weird that when you're looking right in the face of pure success, you say, that, that, that is an absurd safety strategy. It's almost like you have something tied into an investment for your own self-worth. Anyway, let's keep going. Here's the second one from Shannon Watts. Then we'll get to the media. So what could Indiana lawmakers do to protect citizens from gun violence? Because remember, constitutional carry was introduced earlier this year and was, became effective July 1 in Indiana. Require permits. Nope, it's constitutional carry. You don't have to do that. Background checks. That happened when the gun was purchased. Safety training. That is a personal responsibility, not a state-mandated responsibility. Prevent domestic abusers from accessing guns. There was no domestic abuse in this. I have no idea why you even brought that up. It sounds kind of odd. An assault weapons and large capacity magazine ban. We've already talked about it from the Bruin case all the way to the Heller decision. That is a common use weapon that is designed in the Second Amendment for people outside of the militia for individual common use. That's a no-no. You can't do that one. Waiting periods. The individual in this scenario waited four months on one gun and a year and a half on another. Waiting periods would have done nothing or cool down periods. Even in places like New York and Chicago, wouldn't have done anything. Community violence intervention funding. Nothing. There's no way that this would have anything to do with it because there was no beef. There was no acceleration. There was none, none of the points that they always point to. So she's just going off platitudes. And this last one was where she took a nice little shot and went from the elitist angle. Check this out. The NRA and gun extremists sure are eager to celebrate when one person kills a mass shooter who just murdered three people in a crowded food court. Yes, yes we are. But they're always silent when armed police and guards fail to stop other regular horrific shootings. Um, you mean like this video that I did right when Buffalo came back in May where it says, is carrying a firearm the answer? And it was all about the security guard who gave up his life so that those could move forward and I called him a hero? It's even in the thumbnail. You mean like that, Shannon? Because that couldn't be it, because you've got to demonize your opponents. Isolate them and demonize them. I've heard that somewhere before. Don't worry about it. Let's get to the media. All right, so now we've got to get into Reuters. Because Reuters is here to tell you why. May this, may this one time have happened. It is rare. It's statistically improbable. And it's still a terrible idea, even though you're looking at the perfect example and case in point. Let's dive in. Armed bystander credited with preventing more deaths in Indiana's shooting. Well, at least they got the title right. Check this out. Greenwood, Indiana, July 18. The gunman who killed three people in a shopping mall near Indianapolis would likely have taken many more lives if not for the heroic actions of an armed bystander who shot the suspect dead and stopped the attack, police said on Monday. It makes you wonder why they threw the word heroic in air quotes there because, or actually just in quotes, I did the air quotes. It's 100% heroic. Why are you putting a quote on that? That's exactly what it is. Well, there's a reason. Listen as we keep going. Dickin, who is the hero uh, civilian here, immediately became a cause celeb for gun rights advocates who argue, despite government statistics to the contrary, that armed civilians are the best defense against kinds of random mass shootings that killed more than 100 people in the United States last year. Um, first of all, this kind of skewed numbers. Remember how that whole talking point was three to 400 mass shootings this year, more than every single day this year? Well, that doesn't jive with 100. What are they talking about? 
It's almost like they can't get their numbers straight because it's all manipulation. But let's get back to the point. Despite government statistics to the contrary, it sounds like you're arguing against something that works right in your face and you're trying to make a case to invalidate what just happened. You and Shannon, sounds like you guys are chatting. Gun rights advocates seized on the latest shooting as an example of why it's important to allow Americans to carry firearms. Yep, pretty much. Seems self-explanatory. Here's the quickest and best way that you've ever seen to stop a mass shooter in the middle of the occurrence, and it minimized casualties, was incredibly effective, and the thing was over in seconds. Red flag laws exist in Indiana. What you talking about? I don't understand. Where are you going with this? Quote, we will say it again. The only way to stop a bad guy with a gun is a good guy with a gun, the National Rifle Association said in a tweet Monday morning, which they are right. Here's another case of trying to persuade you that this is not normal. It is rare for a bystander to stop a active shooter attack in the United States. According to an FBI report in May showing that only two out of 61 such attacks last year ended when citizens engaged the shooter. I'm just going to pause you for a second. If those two didn't engage the shooter, it'd be zero out of 61. So even in the best case scenario, you're still talking about an improvement from zero, but they don't want to tell you that. They just want to make it seem bad, two out of 61, which I can't even verify those stats, but that's an important piece. A similar New York Times analysis found that only 22 gunmen in the 433 mass shootings since 2000 were shot by a bystander. Again, I bring you to the point where their points are conflicting. Their propaganda is not standing by itself. 433 mass shootings since 2000. Well, that's 22 years. I'm pretty sure that I've been quoting and saying on this channel for about two years now, the Gun Violence Archive says there's more mass shootings than ever before. There were 300 this year alone, more than the days in the year. Any of those talking points sound familiar? Well, but now it's 433 mass shootings since 2000. How the, did the propaganda wires get twisted? They must have. And this last piece, this is where we're getting into the whole thing. I'm going to tie it all together. The shooting comes weeks after the repeal of the Indiana handgun permit requirement, constitutional carry. Now, anyone aged 18 or older who is not legally prohibited from firearm possession may generally carry a concealed handgun in public. Yeah, that's right. And look what happened. Look how amazing it worked out. But they're not over because they violated the mall rules too. The law conflicts with the policy of Simon Property Group, owner of the Greenwood Park Mall, prohibiting guns on his properties, according to its website. The Indianapolis-based company was unavailable for comment on Monday. So you're going to go with statistically unprovable by government. You're going to go with extremely rare, rare in the United States. And and he was carrying a gun on mall property, which he's not supposed to do, even though he saved dozens, if not tens of dozens, no, well, let's just say dozens, dozens of lives. No, 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 no. We can't do any of that because we can't have a narrative going against what we want and what our perspective is actually showing that it works to the American people. So we have to dispel it the best that we can. we got to get Shannon on the phone. Get the tweet machine going. Reuters, get an article. New York Times, where's that quote? And that's what we're seeing right now. They are spinning. They are grasping at straws. And I look forward to hearing what you guys think. And I'll see you tomorrow, uh, tonight at the 9 p.m. segment. I'm Braden. See you later.